In this second part of the Godot Tower Defense series, we're going to be building three turrets and we're going to be coding our first lines of code to make the turret spin around and look at the enemy. Let's get started. So before we can build some towers, we need some assets. And I'm not going to go into as lengthy as detail as last time. You know how this works now from part one. So let's speed this all up. I'm using assets from the tower defense top down pack that you downloaded in episode zero. I'm going to make use of these two tower bases to which we can place missile platforms and turrets. I'm going to make use of this missile platform. I'm going to make use of these two turrets and this missile asset right here. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard with control C. I switch to my Godot project that I got open in the back and here I will right click my towers folder on the assets, open it in file manager and I'll paste these assets into the folder here. Now in Godot, a image or sprite is in its default rotation when it's pointing to the right side. So positive X. It will save us a lot of time and coding if we import our images when they are pointing to the right in case they are directional images like our missile platform, turrets and the missile. If you're on Windows 10, this is super easy. You just right click it and here you got rotate right and there you go. Our images are turned. It's as easy as that. If you're on a different OS, you can of course also do it with many image viewers, Photoshop and whatnot. So you just got to make sure that these images are turned around. Now when you switch to Godot, you'll see that quick bar is loaded those images in here and you can see them here in our tower assets folder. We're ready to build some towers. Every turret that we're going to be making is going to be its own scene so that we can instance that scene into the world whenever we start building. So to make our first turret, we're going to go over to scene. You select new scene and this is a 2D game. So we select a default 2D scene as our new scene. That is going to give us a no 2D and there's nothing wrong with that. So this is a good start. We just want to rename it so we can recognize it. And I'm going to be renaming this to gun tier one. We're going to be creating a gun tier one and a tier two ver version. So that once you're playing your tower defense game and you got enough cash, you build a couple of T1 turrets, you can select one and you can upgrade it to T2. It's going to be in a future tutorial, but that's where we're going to be taking this series. Now, first thing we want is we want to add a sprite for the base of the turret. So we'll be adding a new child node to this gun T1 and that will be a sprite node. We select sprite and we'll drag from the bottom left here in the file manager. We'll drag our tower defense base turret to our texture parameter on the right hand side and that is popping in our sprite. Now we have a base and we need to add a turret to it. So that will be another child node, another sprite, and we're gonna be dragging our single barreled gun image to the texture parameter of this second sprite and that pops that sprite on top of the tower. Now let's rename this sprite node so that we actually remember what they are if we ever need to make changes to this in the future. So we're gonna name them base and we're gonna name them turret. As you can see, we have one little issue now though, because if we go to the right hand side in the parameters here in our transform, and we were to imitate that the turret is tracking a target and we're gonna change its rotation, you can see that right now it's pivot point around which it rotates is in a somewhat unnatural position. So we want to offset this image somewhat. We can do that here with the offset parameters and we can offset this image by, for example, about 12 points on the X axis. If we set the rotation back to zero, now you can see that pivot point is more towards the center of that turret. And as we now rotate that turn around, it starts to have a much more natural feel to where that pivot point is expected to be. Now I'll set that back to zero. Now there's one more thing left to add, and that is in preparation of a future tutorial where we will be adding muzzle flashes whenever the turret fires. This muzzle flash needs to have a position in which we need to spawn it. And that position can easily be taken from the turret if we add a little extra node to the turret. So I'm going to be selecting the turret or right clicking it and notice I'm right clicking the turret, not the gun. We're going to be adding a child node here and that will be a position 2D. That's nothing more than just a position 2D really. We'll rename this one to the muzzle and we'll transform the position. And I think we need about 43 points on the 
x axis. Now you can see this crosshair here, that is the position 2D we've just added, the muzzle. And as we are going to be rotating the turret, as it's going to be tracking enemies, you'll see that that crosshair of the position 2D is going to be turning along with the turret, with the rotation. So whenever we need this turret to fire, we have an exact position that we can extract from that node where we have to spawn in the image or the animation of a muzzle flash. So we're not going to be using that this tutorial, but it's nice to add it already for a future tutorial in this series. Now let's build two more turrets, the T2 version of this one and a missile platform. So we'll pick up that pace a little bit. I'm going to go to scene, new scene. It's going to be a 2D scene. Let's rename that to gun tier two. We are going to be adding a child node that is going to be a sprite. I'll immediately add the second sprite as well. For the first sprite, we're going to be taking the tower. For the second sprite, we're going to be taking the double barreled gun. For the double barreled gun, we'll take the offset and on X, we'll give it also 12 points. It seems a little bit too much. Let's go with 10. Looks like this turret is a little bit more chunkier, can uh, use a little bit less offset. And of course, we'll be adding a child node position 2D. This position 2D is going to be the muzzle one and while we're renaming let's also do that here so this is the turret and this is the base now the muzzle one let's see with 43 that's probably a little bit too far out let's turn it back to 41 and let's put this on barrel number one because we got two barrels we got two muzzles so i'm going to be duplicating with control D while I got muzzle one selected. I'll duplicate it into muzzle two. This will put a second position to D at exactly the same location because all the parameters are gonna be the same. And on the Y, I'll make it minus six. So that now we got two positions to D on both of these barrels. So then we need to instance in the muzzle flash, the animation, we got two barrels to do that with. So with that, we can now make a missile platform. I'm gonna make a new scene. It's gonna be a 2D scene that is again going to be renamed. We'll call this uh, missile T1. We're not gonna be making a missile T2, but uh, again, after this tutorial, feel free to start experimenting yourself. There's some good assets in that pack to make a tier two missile version as well. Uh, with missile one, we'll add a sprite and we'll add another sprite that is going to be the base this is going to be the turret now i could name this uh, platform or missile platform or launcher or whatever but since we're going to be referencing this turret from a centralized script you'll see that in a moment this is going to be the next part we're going to be doing when we start coding it's actually very handy to make sure that all these turrets or all these nodes that are going to be rotating are named exactly the same so let's keep that turret for now um, for the base, I'm going to be selecting our different towers. It's going to be more like a square type tower to give a little bit more variance within our turrets. For the turret, we'll take our missile platform. And I don't think that I'll have to be changing that considering the rotation. That seems pretty natural to me. If you want to give that a slight offset, feel free to do so. And um, on the turret, we are going to be adding um, another sprite, so we're not gonna actually have muzzle because missiles don't have muzzle flashes, but we do want, need to spawn a missile or make it appear as if that missile is firing away. So we're gonna be adding a sprite, we'll call that missile one, uh, we'll duplicate that. Under that missile, we'll be adding a missile image and we are going to be transforming that position slightly. So we're probably gonna give it five on X and let's say minus 10 on Y. And we'll give this one transform five on X and plus 10 on Y. And we also have to add that image, of course. So now we have a little bit of a missile turret that is able to rotate if we are rotating that here and that is going to have two missiles and as this missile turret is going to shoot it's going to shoot one rocket away and then 
while uh, we're preparing to shoot the second rocket, that other rocket is going to reload. So we'll, we'll go over the code, how this missile turret is exactly going to work in a future tutorial. So now we have three turrets. All we got to do is make sure you save them. So with uh, one of the scenes, just hit Control S. I'm going to save that under scenes and we don't really have any folder for this yet. So let's just uh, create a new fo folder under our scenes folder and we'll save these by their name. So it's going to be gun one, gun two and missile T1. All right. So now we got them all saved. Now we can add them to the map and we can start programming some code. So let's start by first adding some of these turrets to the map. So I'm going to be opening my map scene where we saved that on the scenes maps map one. This is the map we have from the last tutorial. Under this, I'll add a new child node and that can just be a node 2D. That is basically going to be a container for us in which we can put the turrets. So this is going to be more like a container that we call turrets and in turns we can instance child scenes. So now we're not adding nodes, we're instancing existing created scenes. And here we have a list of all the scenes we have in our project so far. For example, our gun T1 turret that we just saved. And like that, we can also instance a T2 turret. And we can also instance a missile platform. Now these are instance here on the top. So when we uh, select one, we are simply able to drag these around. Do make sure that you drag the turret. And if you accidentally drag something else, do make sure you hit undo so that you don't accidentally save any other changes you may have accidentally made. And right now we're not snapping these to the grid or snapping these to the to the map or anything like that. But just to test turret tracking, we're going to be making sure that they're going to start tracking our mouse. So as we move our mouse around the map, we'll see what code we need in order for those turrets to track that. So I'm going to be dragging the turrets in, uh, let's say, some logical positions around the map. So maybe we'll put this one or maybe down here. We'll save that scene just to make sure that's done. And let's work on the code for letting one of these turrets track. Now, once we got the code for one of these turrets, super easy, two lines of code, I believe. Then we'll have a look at inheritance, how that works and why that is so important for your project. To start coding, we have to switch back to one of our turret scenes. So let's take gun tier one first. I'm going to select the main node of the scene, which is the top node always. And with this little icon here, I'll add a script to it. This is going to bring this pop up. It's going to ask us what kind of template we want. I usually use empty, but it's very likely it will come as default for you. We create that script and the default script is going to give you all this helper text to sort of get you started. I'm just going to delete it and then it's the same as if it would have been an empty script. Now we need to set the behavior of this turret through code. And of course, that means we need to call a function. We need to write a function and call a function. Now calling a function can be done uh, also through code or with a timer, but there's also various standard functions which are being called by the engine automatically under certain conditions. For example, and this is just a little bit of an example, quick course of Godot scripting, I guess, you have a function initialize. And this basically runs automatically as the scene initializes when it's being brought into the scene tree of the game. But you also have, for example, ready, which runs automatically when the, the scene has finished loading into the game. So it comes right after initialize pretty much. Then, for example, you have the function process, if I can type it correctly. And process is automatically called on every graphical frame that has been rendered. So if your frames per second with how quickly your monitor refreshes is 200, then process is called 200 times per second, which is very quickly. So this is very often done for uh, animations that need to be very, very smooth. But sometimes you have more heavy calculations, mostly related to physics, that 200, for example, would be just a little bit too much. For that, we usually use the physics process function. The physics process function is called automatically by the engine on every physics frame. That's different from the rendered frames. The physics uh, frames, you can find these in the project settings. So if you go to project, project settings on the top, and if you search, oh, I've already searched, I see. Um, but if you press the, the search right here and you were to search for uh, physics, and you'll see that here in the physics category under the common options, you have the physics FPS, which is by default set to 60. So you don't have to change this. It should already be good for you. So that means that this physics 
process function is going to be running 60 times per second. If you change that in the project settings, that means that you're also changing how often this function is called. The delta time is the amount of time that has passed since the last time that the physics process or process function was called. Now, that's a little bit of a quick course into Godot and how various functions work. I strongly recommend you to read the documentation on these default functions. They're very important for making a, uh, a good flow in the script to make sure that you're calling the functions whenever a node has finished loading or is initializing or as a game continuously runs. We are going to be making use of the physics process engine. Updating the rotation of the turret 60 times per second is more than enough for fluid motion, so we don't need the process function. That would just be overkill. What we want to do is we want something to happen on every step 60 times per second. We want it to look at our mouse cursor that is going to be imitating the enemy position. In this tutorial, we'll change that in a future tutorial. So we don't want to code as a, as a practice straight under the physics process function because usually we want to put a lot of stuff in there and if we put everything underneath here that's just going to be a code tornado so we want to uh, nicely structure this in let's say modules or in functions so for example we can define a new function turn so it's going to be a custom function that we're calling ourselves and we can define that function turn and we could code now that we have to look at our mouse. So what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to imitate the enemy position. So I'll create a new variable. So that's with var. That variable is going to be named enemy position. And enemy position is going to be equal to the get global mouse position. So that's going to give us a vector two, a position with an x and a y value. Then what we want to do is we want to change the rotation of this turret, not of the entire scene, but just this turret like I showed you when we were making it. Now, there is an easy function in Godot that we can use. But as I said, we first will need to approach this turret node that we only turn that part. So we're going to get the node and we're going to get the node turret. And as you can see, Godot already comes with the suggestions and with your arrows, you can go up and down between these options. We're going to take the turret we're going to hit dot and we're going to use the function, built-in function, look at. So we're going to make this node look at a position. And that position is, of course, the enemy position. Now, with this function, Godot automatically does all the math for you to calculate the angle. And then based on that angle, it sets the rotation of that turret to look in the right direction. Now, if we switch back to our map, and we hit this play button over here, the play scene button. We can now see that our green turret, our turret T1, is now constantly looking wherever we move our mouse. Now, of course, we want the other turrets to also be able to look at our mouse. What we could do is we could copy paste this script and put it in every single turret. But then basically we have the same code three times over. And if you make seven different turrets or even more, that means all that code is just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. That doesn't make a lot of sense. A lot of these turrets need to have very similar behavior. And that is where script inheritance can really be handy. So let's make sure that these other two turrets also start turning without writing any extra line of code. Let's do that. Inheritance, really important. And that's why I want to start it off early in this series. We are going to go in the bottom left here in our file manager. We're going to go to the turrets map where you now see that we got our gun T1.gd. You see the TSCN, that's for the scene resource. And the GD stands for a GD script or a GD file. That is the script that we have just coded. We're going to right click the turrets folder and we're going to be making a new script. So this script is not going to be linked to any scene. It's just going to be a script alone. That new script I'll call turret. All right, let's call it turrets. With turrets, we're going to double click it. That opens up and we don't need any of this. Now, as you can see, I have this other window here by which I can easily switch between different scripts. So that's very handy if you're coding. I'm going to take this code, I'm going to cut it, not copy, just completely cut it out. I'm going to paste it in here. Now, of course, this means that, oh yeah, that's, that's very important, almost forgot it. The turret script or turrets script that we just made it comes default by extending node. 
which node it extends also determines which functionality it can use, which basic functions it can use. The get global mouse position is a 2D function as it gets a 2D vector. So in order for us to be having access to that particular function, we need to change the node that is being extended. So as we change this into a node 2D, we now have access to all the functions that come with node 2D and that includes the get global mouse position. Okay, so now we have this code on the turret script, and but we don't have it on the gun T1 script anymore. So that basically means our T1 script just stopped moving and this turret script is not connected to anything. We're gonna change that. On the bottom left in the file manager here, we're gonna copy the path when you right click on turrets, that script we just created, and you copy that path. Now in the gun T1, instead of extending the node 2D, we are going to be extending from that script. This allows this scene to make use of all the functions and all the logic that is in that general turrets script. We can copy this to make this easy. Now we can go to gun T2, select it, add a new scene. I'll use empty now, we'll create it, and I'll replace it here as well. And I'll do exactly the same with the missile. We'll add a script, empty, create, and paste. And just like that, all of our turrets are now inheriting all the functionality that we have coded on this turrets script. And now, no, oh, that's the wrong play button, map one. Now when we play this scene, you'll see that all of our turrets are looking at our mouse and even though they all make use of the same function, they all sort of take their own instance of it. They're all pointing to my mouse. And as I move between these turrets, you can see how they're all tracking my mouse now at the same time without having to copy paste all this code around and simply making use of inheritance. All right, that was it guys. Now you got some turrets in your game and they're already tracking your mouse. It's about a bit away from tracking an enemy and shooting it down. If you like this tutorial, then smash that like button and hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next tutorials in this series. In the next episode, we're gonna be having a look at some user interface elements, how to make a game menu with like new game that you can get into the map that we have been creating. And we need to add a couple of HUD elements, like for example, a build button so that we can actually start building some of these towers we have been creating today. Let's get ready for that. I hope to see you in the next tutorial. And until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.